Good to have you here with us. Hello. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to take the water so we can start. So I propose, if you agree, to start from the movie we just uh, watched together, and then to uh, to go deep, deep, to deep on the discussion now and talking about your other films and uh, other more general uh, things about your approach to cinema. So can you please tell us a little bit about the context in which you made this film, in, which appeared in 2005? Yes, the film uh, was. Uh, uh, Really premiered on, in 2005, but uh, it was shot mostly in 2003. And uh, well, uh, this is a period uh, uh, of the second Palestinian Intifada, uh, where there were a lot of uh, uh, suicide bombers, uh, Palestinian suicide bombers, uh, in uh, in Israeli uh, towns and cities. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, there was uh, 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 Israeli attacks on uh, Palestinian towns, and uh, not only Israelis were killed; many, many more Palestinians were killed uh, during this period. Uh, this is uh, always uh, sorry. When, uh, when uh, Israel is uh, whining of how uh, the Palestinians are trying to uh, destroy us and uh, how they kill uh, citizens and Israelis, uh, etc., like uh, now uh, uh, in the clashes in Gaza, uh, I think one indication to understand the real situation is to look at the numbers of the people killed. And which is uh, maybe you may say it's a superficial uh, 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 parameter, but uh, when uh, when uh, it's uh, one to twenty in favor of the Israelis, meaning for every Israeli about twenty Palestinians die, then you understand the the, uh, the amount of force that each side. Uh, uh, can uh, use or uses against the other. Uh, so uh, during that time, and also uh, this is after September 11, there was a lot of uh, discussions uh, by experts or so-called experts of Islam in the media in Israel, but uh, also worldwide about. Uh, the death culture of Islam and how um, uh, death is embedded in Islam. Uh, and I, I know very little about Islam, uh, truthfully, but I know a little about our own culture and we have uh, uh, death in our culture. And this was my decision to uh, try uh, uh, and take a look at our own culture. Uh, well, in all my films, I try to look at us, uh, and uh, so I, I chose uh, those two myths of uh, 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 Israeli Zionist culture: uh, the, the myth of Samson and the myth of uh, Masada, and uh, decided to make uh, like a historical documentary, obviously historical documentary, not in the classical way, not uh, the way BBC does, uh, but uh, in, uh, in uh, my own way. One thing that I did uh, take from, uh, from classical historical uh, documentaries is that, you know, in, in a historical documentary they use, uh, in order to uh, to, uh, to tell the story, they use artifacts, they use documents, they use uh, uh, archaeological uh, sites, they use uh, experts, uh, and sometimes they also uh, do uh, reenactments. Uh, they stage moments 
in the historical story, the way that the filmmaker believes uh, it happened, with actors, costumes, uh, decors, sometimes they use the, the, the real uh, uh, sites. And they, they, uh, they stage uh, situations. So I uh, decided to, uh, instead of staging situations, to use uh, documentary moments, uh, contemporary documentary moments uh, from uh, what is happening now in the occupied territories uh, because uh, obviously uh, 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 the myths are about uh, siege and suicide and uh, this is something that uh, uh, during the Second Intifada has been uh, very uh, present. So I uh, went out to the occupied territories to shoot uh, real moments uh, in order to uh, uh, to, to give you an idea uh, or to, to show or to, to use in the film uh, uh, in order to expand the, uh, the, the, the historical story. What about the part on, uh, when you talk on the phone with your Palestinian friend? Um, this is a larger question, or I don't know, it's a larger... Uh, what, what is the point, of, for example, in this film? So it's clear now what, what was the starting point. But w the structure of the film, when does it... When do you, uh, I don't know, finalize it or uh, con conceptualize it? During the editing, or I don't know, or before going to shooting, or for this film, for example. Uh, okay, uh, for all the films, uh, I uh, uh, conceptualize before, but then there is the film, and uh, during the making of the film, and uh, of course the editing, things change uh, in a way that. Uh, 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 sometimes uh, the the uh, the original story that I wrote is uh, doesn't exist anymore in the film. Yesterday we talked about Z32, about how from a very simple uh, 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 medium shot testimonial it turned into a colossal uh, special effects uh, film, and, and uh, uh, this came about during the making of the film. Uh, in the, 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 the script for this film included a lot of uh, 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 fictionalized uh, scenes that I planned to shoot uh, and eventually didn't. For instance, I, uh, uh, for 18 months I grew my hair long and I, I had a longer hair than yours uh, because I was planning to do uh, uh, Samson's uh, suicide video, uh, and obviously I didn't. I, I cut the hair only after there was a 35 millimeter print of the film. Uh, it, it was uh, I, it was very difficult for me. I knew I would not do it, but it was very difficult for me to admit that I would not do it. So there were also other moments uh, of. Uh, uh, ironical uh, fiction, uh, fiction scenes that I planned uh, that uh, uh, while shooting the film I, I uh, understood how tragic the situation was and that I, uh, it was very clear that I could not uh, mix it with uh, crazy uh, 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 comedy or, or uh, you know, uh, so-called yeah, farce. Um, now, uh, the, the, uh, the conversations on the phone with uh, the Palestinian friend uh, actually were shot uh, sometime before I uh, decided to make the film uh, and uh, were shot without any film in mind. Uh, this was uh, April, uh, May uh, 2002. Uh, uh, during Operation uh, Defensive Shield, 
the uh, when this is when um, the Israeli army um, uh, reconquered the took again uh, the Palestinian uh, uh, towns in the occupied territories that were uh, uh, passed to the hands of uh, uh, the Palestinian Authority, and in uh, April uh, uh, 2002. Uh, the, the Israeli army entered the Palestinian towns again and uh, there was a, a lack of knowledge, of, lack of information, the, the press was blocked and uh, uh, there was little known of what's happening here and uh, if you remember the, this is the time when uh, uh, there was uh, the alleged uh, Janine massacre uh, and uh, so I, uh, I started calling uh, a few friends, a few people I knew in the occupied territories, mostly uh, uh, filmmakers uh, that I knew from before, and uh, to conduct uh, daily phone calls with them to hear how they were, to know what the situation is, to see if uh, there's anything that can be done, although, you know, it's a, it's a war. It's a, what can one person from his desk at home can do? This is a war. But, uh, and uh, uh, one of those persons by, uh, for instance, was uh, Michel Flefe's brother, George, who lives in Ramallah. Uh, and uh, we we know each other for a long time, and uh, uh, and so I conducted also conversations with him, and and one of those conversations uh, eventually ended up as a short film called "The Wait." It's the soldiers that hang up now. If you wish to watch it, it's on YouTube. But this is another person, the the uh, the person in this film. Uh, and he's not identified because I thought uh, that he says a few things that uh, may endanger him and that maybe the uh, Israeli security forces will want to, uh, uh, to take him to questioning when he says you need uh, 100 suicide bombers, etc. In, uh, for Israeli security ears it sounds like uh, this is uh, an active, uh, like this is a promise, not a, a thought. Um, so um, now this person, uh, the, uh, his uh, story is that he was, uh, he's from Bethlehem. And uh, Bethlehem was under curfew for six weeks during uh, April and May because um, uh, fa Palestinian fighters uh, found refuge, found shelter in the Nativity Church in Bethlehem. So the whole area of Bethlehem was under curfew for a very long time and he was stuck in his mother's home because uh, he normally lived in Ramallah. And uh, we uh, conducted the daily conversations. I told all my uh, uh, my correspondents, all the people I spoke with, I told them that I was recording uh, the conversations uh, and I promised them that uh, none of it will be uh, released without their consent and they were, yeah, they couldn't care less uh, and of course uh, later they saw the, the pieces that were released uh, were approved by them. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, this guy was under curfew for six weeks. Uh, you can imagine being stuck at home for six weeks, maybe every few days, have a few hours to get some stuff, to, to buy some uh, uh, food. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but basically this is a, a very uh, uh, anxious uh, period. And you hear from, and, and, and the, the conversations in the film are uh, in, in chronological order, mm -hmm. which, uh, which uh, tells you how his uh, mood has changed uh, 
during this period. And uh, so this was shot uh, a year before I started to make the film. And I, I didn't, uh, uh, it was not intended for a film or that film. But when I uh, did uh, start to make the film and uh, I was uh, in, uh, engaged with dealing with, uh, with Siege, uh, then suddenly I realized that uh, his voice is like a, a message in a bottle coming from a besieged place. And that he could be a representative of the besieged Jews uh, on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not uh, told in this way, in this, uh, this uh, very direct uh, way, but uh, as a, metaphorically, <clears throat> I thought that uh, this could be an interesting uh, way to uh, uh, represent the besieged. Um, and um, yeah, this is, this is how it went. Um, related to what you just explained, uh, this is something, you are a diarist, like you, you film a lot of... Uh, I'm asking this not because I want to be too personal about it, but because I am very curious, because each film, uh, film by film, you, you have a presence uh, in them. It's always spectacular in a way or another, and it's always... Um, in, uh, at the same time, it's uh, like like it becomes like in a way your own diary. Um, so I'm curious if you work on that uh, outside of the films, like I don't know, maybe um, film everything or uh, in different ways, or I don't know, perform and film what you do just to find uh, your persona for the next film. I don't know. No, I don't. <clears throat> Although this idea of uh, diary uh, is something that I tried to do uh, early on, uh, before I uh, really started to make films, uh, I wanted to be a filmmaker and uh, I had no idea what to do, what, I mean, what kind of film to make. And then I said to myself, uh, well, I'll buy a camera and uh, this will, uh, the camera will uh, lead me and nothing happened. So then I, uh, I, uh, I gave myself an assignment and I called it uh, five minutes a day to shoot every day a scene of five minutes. Uh, which later became an assignment for my students. But I didn't finish this assignment well. No, I didn't. I, I shot. Uh, the, the tapes are still there, but I never did anything with it. But it turned out that uh, in many of my films uh, are uh, diaristic, but not necessarily, if you ask me, not necessarily in the sense of my presence in them, but because many of my films are made of scenes that are disconnected from one another. There's not, or, or in several of my films, there's not one character that you follow from beginning to end, or one uh, specific plot, but there are many moments that gather together to ideas more than to uh, a story. Uh, now, as to my presence in the film, and this is something I understood in retrospect, uh, uh, after maybe the second or third film that I participated in, I, um, <clears throat> I understood that it was very important for me uh, to be inside the film, uh, in order to, this is something that has to do with how documentary is. A lot of times uh, you watch documentary and uh, you have the feeling that someone is uh, telling you how the world is, how reality is. Which is, of course, obviously, if you ask me, this is uh, nonsense. Because there is there's no way you can really capture reality. You can maybe put on film or on video 
how you think reality maybe is. But with lots of reservation, how you think maybe how reality is or how you see reality. It's never how reality really is. And the presence of the filmmaker in the film, also the fact that uh, uh, many of the films are their own making of. They include the, the, uh, the making of, the technical making of sometimes, but certainly the, uh, the, uh, the dilemmas uh, of the filmmaker while making the film. Z32 uh, from yesterday is uh, maybe the most explicit uh, of, of them, where the filmmaker uh, uh, does, uh, in a way, self-criticism of his own position in, uh, in making a film about uh, an assassination and providing shelter for the assassin within his film. So, uh, and, and he does it in a very uh, unusual way. Uh, well, yes, in a very unusual uh, way for documentary, in singing with a with a musical ensemble in his living room. So, uh, so uh, I I think that the, the myself is not the subject of the diary, but uh, reality is, and uh, 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 but it's it's important for me to include the, uh, uh, the uh, contemplations about filmmaking and about making this specific film in each uh, film. Yeah, but you are all, every time he's okay. answering to the question that I have, you know, before I ask, I ask them. So. Okay, no, I, I have other questions, it's yeah. just I don't want to monopolize. <laughs> no, no, so, no, okay. one other question that I, or curiosity that I have, you said in the beginning about Avenged One of My Twice that it's kind of a historical documentary or yeah, I have this impression that each film you make has a connection with a specific genre. genre, genre, uh, genre. Like, uh, okay, in uh, Z32 it's of course uh, musical. I think, uh, I don't know, August reminded me a lot of uh, Frank Tashlin. In general, it's genre, American genre or mainstream genre. Is this something that preoccupies you or it's just maybe a. In the well, uh, I've seen a lot of uh, cinema in my in my life. You know, I was born to uh, my father had a cinema, so I grew up in the cinema. Uh, but he, uh, this was a very commercial cinema, and uh, my father was uh, the last thing he was. He's a cinephile. He was a money fee. A money fee. He loved. He, he was a merchant. Uh, and sometimes uh, it happened that he uh, re uh, that he uh, screened good films, but uh, this was not the objective uh, of his uh, of his uh, engagement with cinema. But I'm not a, I'm I'm, uh, I'm not a, a, a historian or theoretician. I'm, I, uh, wh what other genres did you uh, find I'm interested in? Now? I don't know, I, uh, uh, in between fancies, so like I said in August, it reminded me of, of the farces from the 50s or 60s from, especially Frank Tash, you, you know him, the one who worked a lot with Jane Mansfield. Frank what? Tash. No, I don't. Um, uh, and uh, between fancies, um, I, I don't know, it's, it's, um, in the way it depicts this experimentation, theatrical experimentation, it reminded it reminded me of some of the French films that I don't know the same like I don't know. I was just thinking they are not you know they are not it's not a big resemblance. I was just had had this feeling that maybe at some point you also construct in relation to I not in a conscious system. way, but I think that uh, stealing is uh, is blessed blessed. Uh, it's good to steal and you are invited to steal. Uh, uh, and obviously, uh, if you love cinema or uh, if you love art, 
then uh, you uh, uh, something some things are absorbed in you and uh, eventually uh, they may appear in your work as well. Uh, I propose uh, to go back a little bit about um, to the moment when you started making cinema. You told us a little bit about how you started buying a camera and this uh, five minutes uh, plan you had for filming each day. But if I'm not, if I'm correct, you started pretty late, no, to make cinema. Or when did you start? You, you started something else, no? In the yeah, but my first film uh, was uh, exactly 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was a short one called Deportation. Again, it's on YouTube. Almost uh, all my films are on YouTube, so uh, uh, you can, uh, if you wish to watch them. Um, and yes, I was uh, I was already uh, thirty something when I uh, made uh, this uh, first short. I didn't study cinema. I uh, studied uh, philosophy and uh, and arts, art arts making, uh, in two different schools at the same time. Uh, never finished any. I don't have any diploma. Uh, and uh, and it took a long time uh, because in the in the. Uh, in the years, uh, in my twenties, I, uh, I, I wanted to make films uh, that were uh, related to um, uh, uh, independent uh, European cinema, like Wim Wenders, etc., which I'm very happy that it, it didn't happen. Um, but, uh, uh, and or, yes, uh, I, and I tried to write uh, scripts like that, fiction scripts, which nothing uh, of it came about. And, uh, but uh, these are also years where I became more and more politicized. And uh, I think that my political uh, uh, position uh, uh, developed uh, during my university years and, and uh, after. And uh, the Lebanon, first Lebanon war of 82 was a um, uh, big help also. Um, and uh, then uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the first Palestinian intifada, the first Palestinian uprising in 87 uh, started. <coughs> and um, one of the uh, uh, measurements that uh, uh, Israel took in order to stop the Intifada was to deport uh, uh, local leaders. Because, you know, it's, it was a popular uprising. It wasn't led by the PLO. The PLO was taken by surprise by uh, this uprising. And uh, the, the, stupidly, the, the Israeli uh, authorities thought that if they, that they, they didn't uh, understand that this was indeed the people's uh, uprising, and that they thought in, in a colonialist way that if they kick away the, uh, the, the, uh, the leaders, then uh, it will calm down. So they, uh, Deported a lot of uh, uh, political, local political leaders, and this was a very. Uh, uh, when you would see it on television, uh, these were normally very violent acts uh, of, of people basically thrown to the other side of the border, either with, uh, sorry, either with Lebanon or with Jordan, uh, like like uh, potato bags. Uh, uh, handcuffed and uh, 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 you know cloth on their on their eyes, and um, what I uh, uh, and of course there, there was no discussion uh, whether a country has the right to uh, to deport people from their homeland to a, a place where they do not belong and obviously have no uh, documents of and have no 
family and friends there. And I, I, I realized that also people around me were more appalled by the, the violence of the act than by the, the, uh, the, the uh, principle of deportation, which is of course uh, not allowed by, by, uh, by uh, international law. <clears throat> and I uh, thought of um, uh, making, uh, trying to stage a deportation in a very different way, in a, in a way that is uh, uh, calm uh, and not violent, uh, almost uh, polite, uh, and and so to to remove the the this uh, impression that uh, you get from the news and maybe then. Uh, get to uh, uh, the more uh, uh, the, the, princip the principal uh, uh, discussion of, uh, of uh, doing such an act. And this resulted in a fiction, in a short fiction film, 10 minutes long, called Deportation. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, I, I, which I think is, uh, I'm very happy with this film, it's very beautiful, but uh, the last thing it does, I think, is uh, get you to discuss the deportation idea. Uh, I, I mean, as politically, it was, uh, uh, I'm not sure it uh, reached its goal. Yeah. That's why you, you, you decided to start to, to do documentaries? No, I didn't decide to do documentaries. It, it happened. happened. It happened too. Documentaries yeah. decided to do me. Good. <laughs> um, How? Um, well, the, the, my first documentary is uh, well. Also, deportation was um, uh, relating to reality. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, but uh, obviously, it was a stage completely staged, the only completely staged film I, I made. Uh, but um, a few years later, there was a, the, the, the first documentary I made it was called uh, The Reconstruction. Uh, and uh, it deals with the murder case uh, of, uh, of a, a Jewish boy, teenager, from Haifa, which is a, a town uh, north of Israel, in the north of Israel. North and center and south is almost the same. It's a tiny place, Israel. Uh, and, but uh, it's uh, about an hour and a half from Tel Aviv by car. And um, uh, the five uh, Palestinian Israelis, Palestinians who, have Israeli, who are Israeli citizens, <coughs> Uh, were put on trial for the murder of this uh, uh, boy. Not only murder, but also uh, sodomizing his uh, dead body. Uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, what was uh, interesting about uh, this uh, was that um, they were convicted by their own admissions. There was no physical evidence. Uh, to uh, support the accusation. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it was all uh, based, uh, the, the conviction was all based on uh, their own confessions and uh, reconstructions in front of a video camera. Uh, and uh, I read uh, an article uh, by uh, their lawyer who who happened to be a good friend of mine, uh, Viglo Feldman, and um, uh, he uh, told the story of, uh, of uh, the case, and uh, it was uh, extremely interesting. And uh, I, I asked him, 
But, and, and he especially wrote about uh, the video reconstructions uh, that the, the, uh, <coughs> the five um, uh, accused uh, uh, performed. So I asked him to watch the tapes and he gave them to me and I was uh, taken uh, by it. These were uh, uh, unbelievable f uh, material. Later when the, when the, the film was uh, released, <coughs> one critic uh, wrote that uh, this is a kind of material that resembles uh, uh, in its uh, extreme nature resembles the Ceausescu trial. You remember Ceausescu? <laughs> you remember his trial? The, the underground trial? Uh, okay, of course it's different. Um, this is not the same. <coughs> but uh, but um, the, the, uh, he, he, he tried to say how extreme the material of the reconstructions was. Um, wow, I'm, uh, I don't know what happened. No, no, I'm okay. So this was... Um, um, you this material? Yes, I used, uh, yes, about 20 minutes of the 50-minute film is the reconstructions, or which is were of course much longer. They were six hours, uh, and um, it was a classical. Uh, beside for the use of the, the the police reconstructions, which at the time was not yet uh, a very. Uh, this is a time when uh, Errol Morris did uh, read uh, a thin uh, blue line. Uh, but he did uh, fictionalized. He, he staged uh, reconstructions, and uh, but uh, so it was not yet so popular to use police uh, reconstructions. <clears throat> but beside that, the film was a, a classical documentary, and I th uh, and I think in the overall it uh, it uh, dealt with um, uh, with questions about our possibility to know the truth. Uh, you see people saying, I murdered, I did this, I did that, and five after another, and you don't believe them. Yeah. Or you ask yourself whether indeed they are telling the truth, or there is something that you don't know about the circumstances of, uh, of this uh, confession. So um, this was uh, uh, the first, uh, also on YouTube. And, uh, uh, when you started to, so you, evidence, I haven't seen this short time, uh, but when you started to, uh, to be less conventional than you said you were in this first, uh, first short film, um, um, one of the things that I noticed in your films is that you are more, they are more related to, you know, the, we, we had a focus here on uh, Israel and Palestine, and the greatest majority of the other films were concentrated on, let's say, the victims' side, in a way, on the Palestinians, uh, um, and your films are more, I think, are concentrated on commenting on the, I mean, on the perpetrators. I don't want to say it in English, perpetrators. Yes. yes. So I did, I, and the way you choose to do it, this performative way of uh, of commenting upon this, what you uh, record, it has something that I imagine can infuriate. Or I, I mean, it can create very vivid reactions uh, for for the audience who does not agree, or I don't know, for the. Israeli, I mean, basically, who don't agree with your points of view. Is it something that you, uh, first of all, if you agree with what I said, is it something that you, uh, uh, you construct it with a, with a political purpose, or it's more related, I don't know, to aesthetical? Uh, and how do you see this relation in your films between, let's say, formalistic or aesthetical as, uh, construction and their political? Uh, is it something that... I don't know, it's two questions. 
Too many questions. Yes. <clears throat> well, um, first of all, uh, it's true that uh, some of my films do deal with the perpetrator, but uh, I think it's more complicated than that. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, my last two films, uh, Between Fences and uh, Once I Entered the Garden, uh, are films that are uh, uh, very different from the previous films because they are not antagonistic, they are uh, sympathetic to their uh, protagonists, <coughs> and they are um, maybe uh, 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 signify a change in my position, I, I mean, maybe. But, um, and it was something which I, I, I liked, it, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, you want to like people, you don't, it's very difficult to, to be bitter all the time, to be uh, angry all the time. So in the last two films, uh, I have uh, uh, found a way or, uh, it happened that I did films with people I, I liked and loved and, and uh, sympathized and supported. Now, uh, it, it's true that um, <clears throat> when you make uh, antagonistic films, uh, this may uh, uh, create a, a negative reaction by the audience. But they have to come and watch it. And uh, truthfully, my experience is that people mostly don't come to watch films that they know they will not like. And uh, me too. I don't. I don't go to uh, uh, romantic love affair movies because I don't like. Uh, and I, 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 I would not want to sit in the, in the theater and tell my partner, I told you, <laughs> it's going to be terrible. <laughs> I don't like, I don't go. And I, I don't think that I will go, well, maybe for uh, research reasons I will watch, <laughs> research purposes I will watch uh, right-wing films, extreme right-wing, there are not so many, but uh, I, 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 not for uh, pleasure. Not. <coughs> so, um, the, the thing is that we are, uh, whatever happens, mostly uh, uh, engaged films are made and, and uh, watched by uh, um, convinced uh, audience uh, and, and, uh, and very rare, well, I don't know what's your experience, but uh, very rarely they really, they, there is a, 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 a substantial amount of viewers that are there to argue and maybe uh, also the argument may lead to some kind of change. The way we, I thought in the early days that I will be a player uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the sociological discussion. And I uh, <clears throat> recently after Between Fences I adopted uh, um, a position that uh, was uh, formulated by uh, Augusto Boal. Um, you know, uh, in the uh, um, theater of the oppressed, every show consists of two parts. The first part is the play that the participants uh, created, and the second part is called the forum theater, is when uh, members of the audience are invited to the stage to play the oppressed and propose an alternative solution for the dead end of the, the political situation. And Boal said that uh, this, uh, the Forum Theater is um, uh, rehearsals for the revolution. 
not that you learn how to use Molotov cocktails, but it activates the audience to participate in the change that has to come. And in a way I adopted it, not that I think that uh, this is uh, uh, cinema of the oppressed, but uh, that uh, this uh, kind of uh, cinema is um, uh, uh, there to, uh, to support the, 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 view, the public, the viewers, to support uh, uh, an endangered species like people of the left, of, uh, uh, human, uh, uh, hum of, of human ideas, and uh, provide them with, uh, 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 with power, with, uh, to empower the, 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 uh, the, in, the, in a way the oppressed are the, the public. <laughs> and they need, uh, uh, they need materials for uh, regenerating. So I, this is my last interpretation, uh, and obviously it, uh, it's about uh, calming, self-calming, because my films have nothing to do with change. I mean, with change in the world, they never are parts of change. But uh, and I need to explain to myself why I still make them. Besides going to Bucharest. <laughs> so you said you are making them to to to, to self call me. This is what you said. To self call me or to no to empower the the, the public the the the, the 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 last fractions of the left that are still there. Obviously, this is a. a this is something I formulated in retrospect. Uh, it, uh... I have a question about how you make your film. Uh, to come back, um, when did you first uh, understood that you needed to, to, to put your body in the screen, I mean yourself, and to use yourself as a character? And how can you explain uh, that since then, I don't know when, <laughs> maybe I didn't see the first film, um, you are in lots of your films, you are a character, and yes. you think that you will be, or it always happened, you know, that, uh, that you need? Uh, well, it happened. Um, th this happened uh, in, the, in the, 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 the second documentary I made, um, how I learned to overcome my fear and love Avik Shawan, which was uh, shot in, uh, in 1996. And um, Avik Shawan, uh, <coughs> if you uh, don't know, he was uh, uh, an Israeli uh, general, uh, a right wing, extreme right wing uh, politician, uh, a war criminal. Uh, he was uh, uh, responsible for the Sabra and Shatila massacre in Lebanon in 1982 uh, when he was um, Minister of Defense. He started the, the Lebanon war <coughs> and, and later uh, in uh, 2001 he even be, became a beloved uh, uh, Prime Minister until he uh, went into coma in 2005 or six. Five. Uh, and uh, uh, so Shawan was a very right-wing person. I was a, a very or left-wing person, and I was involved in the um, uh, in the uh, protests, in the demonstrations, in the uh, uh, in in the organizations. Uh, anti the Lebanon war that he started. I was the spokesman of uh, the first um, refusist uh, organization in Israel, Yesh Gvul, in 82. Uh, and later in 83 I was jailed for refusing to go to Lebanon, to serve in Lebanon. <coughs> so I, uh, the, when I wanted to make a film about him and I decided 
that uh, uh, election campaign in 96, uh, this is after uh, the, the assassination of uh, Rabin, I thought that this was a good opportunity, a good period, because uh, politi politicians in an election campaign, they open themselves to the public, they, they expose themselves. We have seen this in one word, Romania a week ago. We had the president in one word, Romania. Ah, okay. That's why it was a joke, <coughs> Romanian joke. And uh, so I thought I would uh, follow him and try to get as close as possible to him uh, during the campaign <coughs> and uh, be there when the monster peeps out of his body and he had a big body uh, but obviously uh, and so uh, uh, Mr. Sharon never planned to allow me uh, any access or anybody he didn't know who I was. He's, uh, he, he wasn't planning for anybody to, to follow him during the campaign, so they didn't really check who I was, and in that sense I was lucky. But I still, fearing that he will discover uh, uh, my identity or my affiliation, I played the role of a, you know, of a stupid filmmaker who has no idea in politics, who's just... Uh, impressed by, by being close to, to this uh, fantastic uh, politician and uh, <clears throat> so what happened was that uh, whenever we had a, a close encounter we conducted really stupid conversations about sheep, about uh, really about uh, stupidities and, and uh, and it's all, it was, I was already playing a role in order not to expose myself and obviously I never asked any question, any critical question or never gave him the, the opportunity to question who I really was. Eventually, the, the, what, everything that I shot uh, from the campaign and from his political statements was nothing. It was all a repeatance of the same, uh, you know, how politicians, they have one speech and they change the opening uh, few sentences to adopt it to the audience they meet, but basically they say the same thing and uh, they do it four or five times a day and there's nothing. There was nothing. Uh, but I, something that I realized during the making of the film was that uh, I was looking for a monster and Mr. Shawan was a very nice person. Very friendly, very likable, uh, very polite, uh, he loves classical music. Uh, is, uh, well, you have seen, uh, uh, well, I, I was uh, trapped in, in uh, the Hollywoodian uh, concept of uh, a monster looks like a monster. Apparently, life is more complex than that and I was uh, uh, a little superficial, let's say. And I realized that how, if you didn't uh, consider the atrocities that Mr. Shawan did, if you put aside his history, then you could like him. And this is how, what I did eventually, and uh, the film uh, ended up as a film not about Mr. Shawan, but, uh, but about uh, uh, a filmmaker from the left who goes to make a harsh political documentary about Mr. Shawan, and discovers that he's actually a very nice person, forgets about his ideas, and becomes uh, a fan of Mr. Shawan. And um, uh, the end result is that the filmmaker's wife is not, she's a hardcore uh, uh, leftist, and she leaves him uh, because he fell in love with Shawan. <laughs> um, so, obviously, 
uh, all the stupid conversations that I had with Mr. Sharon, uh, uh, where the, the, are the, 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 the center, center material, central pieces for the, this film. And all, all, all those, uh, <clears throat> those moments where I was oiling him in order to allow my presence there became, suddenly became... Uh, and also uh, the film uh, is, uh, uh, again, it's not even about the filmmaker because I, I never fell in love with Joan. Oh, it's, uh, the, the filmmaker is, uh, in a way, a representative of uh, the, the, uh, the softness of the Israeli left, which later, in, uh, the film was released in 97, and um, there, the, some of the people, well, this is the only time a film of mine was on national television, the uh, biggest uh, rating for me uh, uh, in my life in Israel, and a lot of people were convinced that I did <laughs> fall in love with Shawa. They didn't see the irony, uh, although I thought I left enough keys for uh, decoding uh, the, just the title, How I Learned to Overcome My Fear in Love with Shawa. You know, it come, it's derived from uh, Dr. Strangelove. <coughs> um, uh, which was a strange love, of course, me and Shawa. Uh, and uh, so th this uh, supports your uh, theory about, uh, well, not film genres, but uh, yeah. But um, so, uh, and also when it was released, some of my uh, leftist friends, including <coughs> Ali al Asari, who became the protagonist of Once I Entered the Garden many years after, were very angry at me because I provided Mr. Shawan uh, the stage to uh, appear nice. <clears throat> but uh, four years later, in 2001, when he became prime minister in support, uh, with the support of a lot of people from what is called in Israel the center left, it, which is not left, not very left, but it's, uh, this is how uh, it's a lot of times described. Those, some of those people returned to me and uh, uh, said that uh, now that the film makes sense, uh, how uh, it is uh, about us, the center left, or about the mild left in Israel, that uh, forget about its ideals, forget uh, about uh, the historical uh, 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 meaning of, uh, of our leaders and uh, uh, follows uh, the charisma uh, and, and, uh, and uh, quite. So I propose to also invite the audience if they want, if you want to address questions or maybe some ideas from yes. what you want something else. Yeah, because it was not finished. How did you, uh, how did you, because this is the first time you, you create a character, you understood you had to be a character, but then just a little bit before the news. Well, uh, the next time uh, was a film I made two years after, Happy Birthday Mr. Mugrabi. Uh, well, it has two, uh, two, there are two uh, uh, layers to this, or two levels to this. First of all, uh, the first film was very successful. Uh, the Shawan film was very successful. It was uh, uh, selected by Berlinale, which, uh, you know, uh, imagine, I don't know. Uh, and then it traveled uh, endlessly all over the world and, and it was a huge success and I realized that uh, in every film that I make, I, when I start, I take something from the previous film. Uh, it doesn't necessarily stay there, uh, remains there, but uh, I, uh, I, uh, I carry with me so uh, uh, I carried myself with me. 
But uh, there was also another reason <coughs> for why I became a protagonist in uh, Happy Birthday, Mr. Mugovi. The film uh, tells uh, the story of a filmmaker uh, whose uh, birthday happens to happen on the same day that Israel has its 50th anniversary and the Palestinians ma mark the 50th anniversary of the Nakba, the Palestinian catastrophe. So uh, it's, there are two uh, big anniversaries and one small anniversary that happen on the same day. And this is based on a, on, on a real moment because Israel's uh, independence day changes every year. It's, it's uh, by the Hebrew calendar. So uh, uh, every year it's on a different uh, date on the Gregorian calendar. Uh, and only every ninth, there's a 19 year cycle to that. And it really happens that sometimes Independence Day is, uh, this year, uh, I think it's one day apart from my, my real birthday. Uh, so uh, the year before uh, I made the film, uh, I suddenly realized this uh, coincidence of the Independence Day and uh, uh, my own birthday, and I said, wow. And I was so uh, depressed at the time by the political situation, so I, uh, you know, Netanyahu was, uh, this was Netanyahu's first year in office, 1997. <clears throat> so I said to myself, uh, ah, let's, I'll make a film about how the state is, uh, um, uh, celebrating 50 years, it's a big celebration, and the, the filmmaker is devastated of his uh, life. Uh, you can say a midlife crisis or some kind of uh, uh, a crisis. And uh, of course the Palestinian uh, anniversary of the Nakba uh, also uh, uh, this became between two uh, anniversaries. Uh, so, and uh, later I carried myself to August, who some of you may have seen it here, but obviously it changed because in August I, or I play three characters, not one, uh, and, and uh, obviously I needed uh, to change and wanted to change. Uh, uh, the the, the uh, way I presented in the film was not planned, but uh, emerged during the editing. But uh, the burlesque uh, nature of August was not, I was not, uh, I didn't uh, uh, preconceive. Yes. So if you want to uh, interact with Mr. Mugabe, we have a microphone. In there. Hello. Okay, I have a question. In this documentary that we saw tonight, did you closer, film, closer. did you film every scene? In this documentary that we saw tonight, did you film every scene on the mountains with a historic site in the classroom, also with the soldiers? Uh, did you film it personally, or you had someone helping you with this? Uh, and you speak Arabic. In some cases, I think uh, the cameraman talk in Arabic with uh, people there on the field. Or not. Uh, well, uh, all of the scenes uh, uh, that has to do with uh, Masada and Samson, uh, I had the cameraman there. Uh, but. Uh, all of the situations in the occupied territories, beside the rock concert, uh, I was alone uh, doing camera. Uh, you know, uh, I'm a ter terrible cameraman. This is why it's shaking all the time. Um, <clears throat> uh, which is how I. Uh, uh, worked a lot uh, also in previous films. In some situations there's a cameraman with me, but in others, in the uh, traveling in the occupied territories, 
was uh, too complicated to have a, a crew. Um, <clears throat> first of all, because I was, uh, uh, during one year, I traveled about three times a, a week uh, to the occupied territories. When you say the occupied territories, you think it's a far away place. Uh, no, it's uh, 45 minutes from my home is already the occupied territories. Uh, uh, so it's, it's all very near. <clears throat> but uh, I usually would travel with others uh, who had something to do in the occupied territories. Either they were uh, 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 field workers of NGOs or uh, activists or uh, journalists. So I, I uh, always uh, joined in someone's car, which uh, uh, again, um, uh, having more than one person made it uh, uh, more complicated. So all of the material, beside the rock concert, all of the material in the occupied territories uh, was shot by me. I don't speak, well, I, for, since then I speak more Arabic, but not so good. And when you hear someone speaking with the people, Arabic is probably one of the activists or the, the field worker, the NGO field workers. Uh, it's not me. But in general, um, you work with... Uh, some, uh, how, how big is your crew when you work? And uh, you have a, a specific editor with, which, with whom you work uh, film by film or how... Because I imagine it's very important that they think... Uh, have seen a lot of Philippe Belaish? Yes, Philippe Belaish uh, is uh, the cameraman that I uh, uh, work uh, normally with. <coughs> and uh, we've done four films together. Um, uh, the crew is uh, two people. Uh, Philippe, I, I mean, if, if I'm not alone, then there's also only another person, uh, the cameraman, and then I do the sound. Um, the, the only time that there was a third person in the crew was this uh, uh, rock concert, which was in a very extreme settlement. And uh, I, uh, and these are people that are really terrible or frightening. And I was very uh, worried about our security. So uh, uh, on that day, we, uh, I asked uh, one of my uh, students, or ex-students, that was uh, uh, a good runner, <laughs> to come with us. And his job was to have the keys for the car in his pocket, <laughs> in case he, didn't, he was not supposed to do anything about the filming, just to be there and with his eyes open <laughs> because uh, uh, he was not even supposed to save us, I mean physically. He was supposed to get to the car and turn it on. <laughs> uh, so this, uh, this is... Um, the, uh, I uh, hired the best editor around in, uh, in my little home. I edit on my own, uh, sometimes, uh, also in this film you find uh, credits for other editors, but this is uh, for uh, co-production co reasons. Mm -hmm. I edit, uh, I completely edit on my, so on my own. So you in, the, in, the, in the other room. It's, uh, because it means that you depend on only on your own feedback while working on... Well, I do uh, uh, invite uh, a few friends to watch, um, not necessarily editors, but people I trust, uh, the, 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 uh, their, the opinion of, and, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, the, uh, I, I was very, uh, I relied a lot on, on the feedback of uh, my former wife, uh, which was a very good uh, uh, 
critic. Yes. How is it now the situation in Israel? The situation now in Israel. It's fantastic. <laughs> Everything is good. <laughs> we are heading towards uh, I mean, uh, it's uh, difficult to answer that. that there's little uh, to expect. The occupation has, uh, of the Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza Strip has uh, just uh, marked uh, 51 years. Um, the siege on Gaza is, uh, is a terrible crime uh, against human humanity. Uh, people uh, die there from bullets, from bombs, from, uh, from uh, 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 contaminated water, from lack of food. Uh, what can I say? Uh, in three weeks we have uh, elections. Uh, there is, uh, it's very possible that uh, Mr. Netanyahu uh, will be crowned as uh, a Caesar for life. Uh, uh, well, what can I say? I'm uh, very lucky in that sense that my films don't age. It, uh, the, uh, the situation doesn't improve. It, you cannot look at the film and say, ah, yes, this is how it was. No. <laughs> Caesar means like the Masada we will be like in... Um... Yes, and we will all have to commit suicide in order to find the uh, refuge from him. Yeah, I had a question about your film uh, we saw just... Uh, uh, it, it's, uh, in fact, it's not a question, it's just that uh, it's very interesting the way that you uh, worked on identification, like trying to uh, show how uh, the process <laughs> is held on children, adolescents, how they, they enter the, the character they are supposed to, to feel, and how you use the strengths of this uh, identification to, <laughs> to de deconstruct the, the question of uh, Palestinian uh, uh, political problem. And that I felt when you spoke about uh, Augusto Boal, it was uh, interesting that you you could imagine those uh, those acts, and the film is acting that way in, in the way that we are always uh, putting aside on the other other boundaries of uh, of us. And at the end, it looks like as if you were uh, slowly erasing the character of Palestinian to become the one with. With anger, you are becoming very uh, uh, angry with the, the and, and this is slowly becoming. You are becoming the the one who is oppressed in a certain sense, as I felt. Just could you could you maybe tell something about the identification? And it is uh, <laughs> is it something that is important for you? Or? Well, I, I am not sure I understand exactly what identification means, but uh, uh, I definitely uh, uh, dependent on, on uh, uh, what you may call a role exchange, role play uh, uh, in this film and also in others. Um, the idea that uh, uh, the um, Historical, uh, uh, I mean, the historical in the historical story, uh, you find the Palestinians uh, besieged by the Romans, and in the contemporary story, the Romans are the Jews, 
and uh, the uh, Palestinians, the Romans, and, and the Jews are the Palestinians. So uh, this uh, twist of, uh, of roles that uh, now, uh, in the past, the Jews were besieged, and now the Palestinians are besieged, and uh, uh, in the past, the Romans were the perpetrators, and now the Israelis are uh, the perpetrators. So, of course, uh, this is uh, an important uh, uh, twist for me. It, uh, I'm not sure that, uh, well, I, uh, you know, I, uh, again, this is a superficial belief or, or, or position to say, if you could enter my shoes, you would understand, yes? Uh, we tend uh, to, when someone doesn't understand us, uh, we uh, also in personal life, we tend to say, if you were in my shoes, you would probably understand. I'm not sure it works like that. And I'm certainly not sure you can really enter someone's shoes. And, and this is a discussion that is uh, held in, um, in uh, between fences at a certain, uh, at a certain moment. Whether when, when Israelis uh, play uh, the, the Africans, the, the, the black uh, asylum seekers, whether they can really uh, uh, identify uh, or understand uh, uh, the, the, what it means to be uh, an asylum seeker, or is this just uh, another uh, uh, dramatic uh, uh, way to tell a story um, or to try to uh, evoke some thought, but uh, there's a, a, a serious question of, of uh, <clears throat> whether when we go to, to film uh, 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 or to even to be active activist in other people's lives, how much uh, we can really be part or how uh, much we stay outside and there is no way that we can uh, be part. I don't know if I answered your question. I have the feeling that not. But I definitely don't think that in the end, when I am angry at the soldiers, that I become the Palestinian. I may represent a certain rage, but a Palestinian would not survive this uh, scene. Uh, will not survive because they will not allow him to survive. That, that's very strong because we, we can feel that uh, how you are Israeli at that point, that for sure. Because we, we, know, we understand that uh, the weapons could kill you if you were Palestinian. So it's, uh, you know, when they say uh, uh, you are a part of us, they don't say that that way, but uh, the soldiers told you something like that. And uh, we see the fence and the, the children are so far, and you are all part of the same country in this shot. So you, you, you are uh, one in front of the other, you are behind the fence, and uh, you, you are in the, in the other side of the fence, and the children are... are the, it's very uh, strong the way that you, you are theatrically a part of, uh, of the same land at that point. And it, it gives sense also to the, the first scene where you are behind the fence and the Palestinians are waiting. And uh, it's really, uh, I really felt the organic question of the body, how you, you act with your body and how uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, simulacre, like, um, it's uh, faking, the body fakes identity also. You are all the same, but you have all the codes that are making the difference. So it's really, really, we oui, very, very interesting the way that uh, it's, yeah. Uh, well, yes, at the certain moment, this uh, young officer there says to me, I hope that you have a son that is watching this now. Uh, which is, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is a, a, 
underneath this uh, it means w uh, that we are from the same uh, uh, group and uh, community and that actually what he assumes is that my son would uh, uh, be uh, in his position uh, at this moment, uh, which uh, obviously was not the case because my son refused to become a soldier. This is why it was, the film was dedicated to him at the end. Um, but uh, this was a very, uh, to, I'm taking it now to uh, another, this was a very uh, uh, interesting moment when he said this, because to return to a, a very early question, one of the uh, 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 in, in, this, in the original script, uh, the story, the, the film should have started with my son calling. Uh, the police, or I, uh, announcing that his father has disappeared, and all that is left from the father, we don't know where the father, the father is, and what is left is a pile of tapes of what he shot before he disappeared. And a detective comes to the house, and him and the son watch the tapes, and suddenly, this officer must have read the script because he said, I hope your son is watching this now, which is like, wow. I, I was, uh, of course, by then the, the, I understood that uh, this will never happen, this uh, script will never happen, but I, I found it fantastic how um, he could imagine, uh, again, a long time before, uh, Live, being live on Facebook, uh, that uh, my son is at that moment uh, Other questions or thoughts? Uh, I'm not even sure if it's a tracing or a question, but I put together uh, a part of the film um, with the kids, we were at that class when they are talking about suicide and put together with the ending of the film when you said that uh, your kid refused to uh, fight. So, is it hard for a child, for a young, to choose that? Um, is it common to think, to uh, talk about suicide, death, fight? Or, um, so, it's common or hard? Because in our culture, I guess talking about suicide is not very common. Especially if you are, I don't know, maybe that kid was around 10, 10 years old. So maybe you are talking, if you talk about suicide 10 years old in Romania, it's like it's depressive, it's something wrong with him. But it was something different, it was like a very light or a, it was not a dark discussion in their lesson. And considering this, when you get young or an adult, is it difficult not to choose that? And is it something great uh, to choose not to fight, and refuse to go to be a soldier? Look, they don't really talk about suicide. Uh, suicide is a metaphor for not uh, 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 not giving up, for not uh, uh, allowing defeat. Uh, uh, it's about, uh, uh, it, 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 it's in a way a metaphor for if you lose the land, then uh, it's as if you committed suicide. So you cannot afford to lose the land. Um, it's, it's a, uh, it's, the last thing it is, is about suicide. It's about fighting. It's about uh, uh, fighting and, and uh, killing the other, and defeating the other. I got it that way, but even though uh, they use this, these words, death, suicide, fight, so it's like, it's a bit more cruel. Yes, uh, but well, I, I, what can I say? I mean, this is, uh, uh, also you may think of, of the Masada, uh, 
people. I mean, this class uh, moment is uh, concerning the, the Samson story, that is a biblical story. Uh, and uh, in, Isra in Israeli culture, you know, Samson um, in the Bible is, uh, is, uh, is described as a judge, a very strong judge, but he, he's, he's, uh, uh, he's, uh, uh, he's never described as a hero. It doesn't say hero, but in our culture, in Israeli culture, we call him Samson the hero which is something that was added to his um, um, uh, characterization. Um, and and uh, also you ask yourself how, how come the Masada uh, myth became uh, such a, an important uh, part of Israeli culture. It's about uh, uh, giving up, it's about uh, defeat, it's about uh, it's about slaughtering your children, you know. The, uh, uh, there were more than 900 uh, people on top of Masada, according to the, the original story. Um, not all of them were men, there were also women and children, and according to the, the, the story that was written by a uh, 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 Roman uh, historian who converted from Judaism, uh, they uh, slaughtered their own children before they slaughtered the women and then uh, the men, very few people really committed suicide. It was a huge, a ter a crazy slaughter. I mean, uh, what's his name? Jim Jones uh, kind of, uh, uh, of event. Very few people really killed themselves there. <clears throat> Less than 10 according to the story. So. How can this become a, a stimulating story for fighting for heroism? Crazily enough, it has. Yeah, I think it's a matter of myth too, because we have our neolites. <laughs> Your myth. No, but we have our pure I mean, it's, uh, we are taught when we are children about uh, suicide. Okay, it's not a mass suicide, but it's a model, you no, know, of resistance in front of no. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's different, but it's, we have our suiciders. In fact, it was the, the, the light of the discussion, so they, the kids had during that lesson. Yeah. Thank you. But, uh, also, they were, they were being filmed. I mean, uh, wasn't that the I, um, I remember from uh, school that when we had uh, this kind of conversation, at a, Imagistic. Uh, yeah. When we were imagining uh, certain situations, that we were being really uh, pumped up and uh, would assume that we would do a lot of heroic stuff. Yes, but uh, look, the, I'm not saying that the presence of the camera didn't encourage the children to um, to express themselves. But they didn't invent anything. Uh, th this is a common uh, discussion of, of, uh, of those myths. And, and uh, the, uh, look, uh, what, uh, this is something that I didn't explicitly say in the film, but this is a period where there are Palestinian Samsons blowing themselves up in the streets of the Israeli cities. How, and you, you say, and, and obviously when such a, an event, a, a, a suicide bomber explodes himself, you say he's a madman, he's a, a criminal, this is a crime against humanity, etc. How can at the same time teach, uh, how can you at the same time teach the story of Samson without reservations? The children may have been overexcited, but the teacher, she should have, or you would think that the teacher should put things in proportions, and 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 uh, because if if suicide bombing, if and Samson is the first suicide bomber in history, if you ask me, if suicide bombing is can be your your myth, and he can be your hero, what 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 criticism do you have over the? Palestinian suicide bombers. So uh, the, this is a, a total uh, loss of, of uh, 
of, uh, of uh, political or uh, 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 ethical yeah, conscience. Let's call it by the name. It's brainwashing. And the last man? Yeah, I think you can call it by its name. It's brainwashing. And it looks like this to me. And the last man who talked was crazy. I, I mean, he talked like a psychopath, despite or because his tragic personal history. Nine people from his family had died between 1947 and, you know, so, but, but he, he had no logic. He, had, he was... Which, which one are you talking about? The, the last man, the, the man who told the us... Yes. Yeah, the Yes. Yes, well, uh, but uh, brainwashing, uh, I agree. Uh, the, uh, I mean, indoctrination is definitely uh, uh, there, uh, but also uh, you would think that also when indoctrinating, you try not to create your own fallacies within the, the, within the theory. You would, you cannot. Uh, uh, say one thing and the, its negation at the, in the same sentence. And in this context, at this time, uh, reality uh, provides us with uh, 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 war criminals exploding in our streets and in the classroom we say that the same kind of act is an uh, act of heroism. This is self-negation. This is mad. This is crazy. Okay. So this is why I was there. How dangerous, my question would have been, how dangerous, how, how often are you in physical danger? Well, you have seen the most, uh, the most of my physical uh, danger. Uh, not in the last scene with the soldiers, but in the scene before that when they pushed their bodies against mine uh, in order not to allow me to um, to photograph uh, others uh, had uh, harsher experiences. Uh, uh, some cameras were broken. I don't know, uh, but the, it's very clear that um, for the, the soldiers, it's uh, always very clear when they see me that I'm an Israeli. I'm for them uh, uh, an older person. I could be their father. And sometimes I think in the last scene, although I'm, I'm not proud of uh, my foul language, uh, it's a little bit like uh, a father preaching to a, 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 a son or to a child uh, in a very violent way. In a very, but uh, uh, this is the scene I hate the most from all my appearances in, uh, in all my films. But uh, obviously, for many reasons, it must be there, uh, as long as I don't have to watch it. Um, so, uh, uh, it's, uh, but uh, I mean, I, I, some of my colleagues had uh, more, uh, uh, more violent uh, uh, correspondence with with soldiers, but I this is the most I. <coughs> so I think we need end soon the, the discussions. I agree. Yes, <laughs> but I want, I have one more curiosity, a brief one. Do you have um, I don't know um, filmmakers or films to which you think? Uh, often or more often than to others or not necessarily? Uh, yes. Um, uh, I think a lot about uh, uh, Chantal Ackerman and my cinema is exactly like hers. No. It's not, but uh, she's, uh, I love, I love uh, her cinema or a big part of her cinema. Uh, and uh, I love uh, uh, a big part of uh, Francis Coppola, but um, yeah, this is an answer. It's not the the. Uh, 
and until uh, one from the heart, I think, the, uh, the conversation, which is uh, an all-time masterpiece, the God, two godfathers, one apocalypse, it's enough for one person. Uh, and I, it's very, for me, it's very sad. The, the, in the later, he, after one from the heart, one from the heart is still an interesting film, but after that, he, he made such shitty films, and it's so sad uh, because you know he's, he's a genius, and how how can this happen? So uh, I hope it doesn't happen to me that someone uh, later sits and says. He did such shitty films in the end. <laughs> and, is, and from Israel, are there some filmmakers who you admire? Or? Yes, uh, uh, obviously, uh, to, uh, to endorse your uh, diarist uh, theory, uh, David Perlov is, a, is a, I think, a fantastic uh, filmmaker. He's not dead anymore, uh, and he did uh, in the 70s. He did uh, uh, a film called Diary, uh, which uh, is a unique uh, one. I mean, you have seen many, many diaries, but you haven't. If you haven't seen Perlov, then uh, this is uh, something to um, Abraham Hefner, also a dead filmmaker. I have to kill them in order to like them. Yeah. No, uh, but Abraham Efner uh, uh, was a very uh, a filmmaker that I really liked, and only recently I watched uh, a couple of his films again, uh, which I haven't in a while, and uh, he was a crazy, uh, nice, crazy person. Uh, he made fiction. Uh, Ranan Alex Alexandrovich, who is a uh, uh, a younger, alive filmmaker who did uh, the law in this part. Eran Kolirin, uh, if you heard the name, uh, which has done uh, at least two of his three films are fantastic. Shlomi uh, El Kabetz, uh, who worked uh, together with his sister Ronit El Kabetz, who died uh, four years ago. I'm, I'm not such a misanthrope. I like other people's and you, films. You, you also act in other people's films, I heard. Yeah, but this is uh, only because they are friends. I, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not an actor and... Uh, yeah. No, we, we just screened in the festival one beautiful film from the 80s of a filmmaker who took in which film you will, you, you will star, no? We will see you in... Even I will not star, be a star. I will... I, I, it, it's because uh, one day shoot, so I... Igal Bostein is now making a new film. He had the film here, uh, Life of It's in My Lot. I think that you have an, another screening of it today. Uh, was already. So uh, anyway, uh, he's, uh, uh, I like his uh, cinema and I like uh, him personally. So I played in his film last week. A very interesting character. Yes, the character of, of Hitler. So on this note, so you see, the monster can look nice. <laughs> so thank you very much for everything. And last year we planned to organize something also related to Shantar Akhil, but it's a coincidence. So maybe we show also the other film of yours uh, and you come back. And we discuss your films at Shantar Akhil. I, I will be very happy to. With uh, her editor. Okay. It's uh, in the way to be organized. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.